Hello, trading is closed on September 24th, 2020. We'll start with our disclaimers, talk about the video for my webinar, and then we'll do our predictions. Well, this is my plan for Friday, the 25th of September. It's no guarantee it's a good plan. Trade at your own risk. Anyone wants to contact me regarding anything, webinar, or anything else, here's my email address. My son sent out video, copies of the video of the webinar to everyone who paid for it. You should have received it. It does take a long time to download, so if you're sitting there and it hasn't finished, um, please give it a chance. Some people have emailed me, they want a copy. You can send $57 to my PayPal account. Here's how to, here's how to, here's how to access it. I'll try to send you the material within a day. Any questions, just use the email address that we showed. All right, so much for preliminaries. Look for the pattern with the early low. There it is. And tomorrow's pattern also has the early low. We said that there was a higher MEJT target. I thought it probably wouldn't print, but I said if we gap down smartly, even though the price will have, well, even though the the price should print at some time. I thought it'd be out of reach for today. We actually didn't miss it by a heck of a lot, but it did not print. So this gets added to the list. This one gets taken off the list, 32.2404. So we're going to add 32.9731, take off 32.2404. These aren't just targets, they're also support resistance levels. The market never forgets them. Even after two months, it stopped right at the number. Kind of an amazing thing. Now, it's um, somewhat positive that we hit the low of the day early and rallied. In general, it's positive. But all the positivity goes away when you rally all day and you can't close over any of these highs. And it would have been more convincing had we closed under the lows, but that's still negative enough. What's even more negative is we stopped right at Fibonacci retracement levels of this decline. This is 61.8, 50, 38.2. We just stopped right there. So as far as I'm concerned, we're still in a decline, but that doesn't mean we have to drop tomorrow because as you'll see, we did gap under all the prior lows, but then we closed over. And that's actually a positive sign. It could be a rejection of the lows, but for the bulls to make their point, they really have to clear this high and preferably clear it early. Me, JT, give a few calls during the day. We're dropping here. PJT said it was a false move. It's a price that would retrace, and they did. This pattern in the afternoon is when we discussed at the webinar at length. We got an ultimate sell. As we said with PJT, normally you don't act when the signal's given. You just have a target. And the target here was that we trade higher but it wouldn't stick, that we trade lower, but if it came too soon, it wouldn't stick. And that before we could get a move with staying power, you'd have to return to this price after enough time had passed. So it doesn't always, so anyone who acted on that was rewarded with, I think this is like 30 plus points or something in a relatively short period of time. So, Anyone who used the system as it's intended to be used certainly could have profited from this, but I'm not, I'm going to tell you it doesn't always work as, as accurately as it did today, but it works that well often enough. This number here, this is a TDST line where it's at 3204 and change. 
There's support at and one bar under the line. There's also support in the lower Bollinger Band. None of that prevents us from trading under it. This is the general idea, looking for wave blue C to emulate wave blue A. Wave blue A was an impulsive five-way pattern. Blue C is counting in threes and they're overlapping. Doesn't mean it can't be C. Wave C can be a three-wave or a five-wave structure. But it does suggest it isn't going to be a carbon copy of A. And we have to be prepared to look for other interpretations of this decline, even though I think it has a ways to go. This is how I'm counting it on the shorter term chart. I think it, it's really, you have to go through a lot of, con, a lot of contortions to convince yourself that wave black C is over. I mean, you could say it's ABC. It just doesn't look like a complete pattern to me. And here we see that although we gapped under all these lows, we closed over them. And that can be a rejection of the lows, but you really want to clear this high and preferably clear it reasonably early for confirmation. But even if we cleared it, it's pretty tough for me to see this decline as, um, as, as having ended. Doesn't mean we have to drop tomorrow. These are the patterns for this week, really low. These are the patterns for next week. Hard to believe it's almost October, but that's what the calendar says. Tomorrow's pattern has the early low. Doesn't mean you won't gap up. We're in a steep decline. I don't think it's ended. It's not bullish that the rally from Wednesday's plunge stopped right at Fibonacci retracement levels. And it's not bullish the day-long rally couldn't close over intraday highs. That being said, the market failed to hold on to a close under prior lows, which is positive. That doesn't guarantee another rally attempt tomorrow, but it does mean you can't rule it out. And unfortunately, I can't really get more specific than that. I think the decline's not over. But that doesn't mean we have to drop tomorrow. So tomorrow's pattern has the early low. If this falls early, there should this invalidates this whole rally attempt. If this one is cleared early, there could be more upside. But I don't have any guarantee either one of those things could happen. If we piddled around and didn't go anywhere tomorrow, it wouldn't really change a longer term picture, which in my mind means we have further to go on the downside, regardless of what happens tomorrow. And that's today's call.